Hey guys, it's Alden from the Moss and Crate.com. It's a video I've been wanting to do for a while. It's about the um, explosive sniper rounds, or what would be called observer rounds, uh, for political correctness of that day, I guess. They would use these to sight in guns, uh, gun positions like MG42s and so on. Uh, but they were banned, and they still are banned, from use to uh, kill a human. But the Russians and the Germans didn't really care for each other too much. They didn't really uh, follow the Geneva Convention or anything like that. So they decided that they were going to use these rounds. Specifically, snipers used them quite a bit. Uh, they're very hard to come by, and uh, you didn't want to be captured with these on you because you would probably be tortured and killed quite quickly. This one's actually a fairly rare one. Uh, this one is a uh, tropical, or what they would... I guess call a tropical round because it's got the neck sealant there which uh, the ones before it I believe did not have. 1943 vintage. Uh, so basically what this stuff does is it's like an, any other 8mm and again the, the Russians had the equivalent they had the 7.62 54R which I do not have I could not attain. Might as well go ahead and mention this is almost impossible to find and very expensive on average, you're going to spend about 15, 20 bucks around for one of these if you can find it. Um, it is legal. Um, it has to be above a quarter ounce of explosive, I believe, for it to be considered a explosive device by the ATF. I'll go ahead and mention that it is legal to have. Check your local states because a lot of states, you know, the typical ones like California, will not allow you to have it. At any rate. It's basically a projectile within a projectile. Inside here, if you were to cut this in half, like a cutaway gun, you would see there's, uh, I forget what they called it. It's not cordite, what is it? I, I forget what it's called, but at any rate, there's a little bit of explosive here, and there's a little needle, or like a firing pin almost, that sets off, I guess, powder that, that sets off the, the, the explosion. So when this hits something hard enough, that, that hits it, the uh, firing pin hits it inside there and blows it up. All right, so we're going to be shooting this out of a BYF-44, so a year after this ammunition was made. Now, I know this is going to be that one guy that's like, you're not supposed to load it that way, it could hurt the extractor. Well, I'm really scared that this ammunition is going to go off. Again, I may be way over you know, doing it, but I'm going to put it directly in the chamber and shoot it that way. All right, let's go take a look. So this anti-gun lawyer zombie is not having a good day. There's the hole. So I can put my hand up to it. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. You know, I don't know if it exploded. Uh, I saw a spark, so something happened. That's a pretty good sized hole. I mean, I could fit my fist in there. Very <laughs> gonna fist that zombie. <laughs> Got it in there pretty easily. So we're gonna try it one more time and see what happens. Try one more time here. Wow. So as you can see, I'm not sure if the uh, if it ignited or not. Uh, I see smoke coming through it. I don't imagine that would be just the projectile if it hadn't gone off, but uh, I guess it could be. Let's get in a little closer, see if we can find any. I mean, it's, it's warm in here, so I'm assuming something gone off. Hopefully you guys can see it better than I can through the GoPro, but we're gonna try it with the gel next and see what happens. The hits, one, two, three, four. I don't know where number five is, uh, right here. looks like number five. So I guess these are going off. I'm seeing some burning right here. If you can see in there, you can see how dark it, brown it is. 
So they are going off, and as you can imagine, if that were to hit anywhere near your heart or any other organs, you probably wouldn't be alive very long, if at all, after it hit you. All right, so we're going to try it in the ballistic gel now. See how, how it does. That definitely went off. I did see some sort of flash there and that gel is definitely burnt. So let's go take a closer look. Ballistic gel is designed to mimic human, human muscle. This didn't have any bone in it. Wow, it's still smoking. Look at the smoke. Can you get that on camera? Hopefully you can see the smoke there. It's warm. <laughs> it's designed to mimic human muscle. So as you can see, this thing just carved right through it and blew off the bottom half. So imagine that going through the front of you and exiting out your back. That would take out your spine. 30 to 40, maybe 50 percent of your back would be gone. All right, so we've got two shots left. Let's see what it does to the ballistic gel and then the uh, dummy behind him. See, I didn't see it go off that time. So I, I really think that it takes something, uh, because we shot one through a two by four earlier and it did absolutely nothing. So I, I'm thinking that it takes quite a bit of force. It has to hit bone or something like that to reliably go off. Or it could be just because that round is over 70 years old and is not in that great a shape. All right, let's see what this last one does. Wow. <laughs> I hope you can see that in the close-up from the GoPro because that looked like it caused a terrific amount of damage. Well, as you can see, it's uh, still some smoke coming off of this. I can't tell if that one ignited or not. It sure looked like it did. This ballistic gel is, is toast, as you can see. <laughs> Gosh, that's nasty. I wish it was red. It would look like blood, but... Yeah, uh, you wouldn't want to get hit by an 8mm in general, but especially not this stuff. So hopefully one of these days I can track down some 7.62-54R. I think N from Forgotten Weapons actually did a uh, video on this stuff where he had the 8mm and the... 7.62.54R, so that may be worth checking out. So it's the end of the day, went through five rounds. Looked like about two of or three of them went off. The other two, I don't know if it was because they were going through something that wasn't thick enough, like the, the cylinder uh, cinder blocks didn't seem to set it off as well as the uh, ballistic gel did. But either way, there's some holes inside the zombie here that are probably the size of grapefruits. So definitely not something you'd want to get hit with. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button. The more subscriptions I get, the more money I can afford towards getting better equipment. And I always highly appreciate it. Thanks, guys.